prevails, the blood prevails. Just like in olden times, no matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. I know the blood prevails. Oh, yes, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. Just like in olden times, no matter what the people say, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. I know the blood prevails. Let us go before the throne of grace. Your Heavenly Father, we come before you with just thanksgiving and joy, remembering all that you have done for us, especially today as we open our eyes before the sun rose and uh, thanking you from just letting us open our eyes, realizing we still had the use of our faculties. Oh God, and here to worship you one more time. Such an important day, how you gave your life, shed your blood so that we could live took our place in death, and we come here to worship you today. Oh, Father, in your presence is just healing, deliverance, your salvation, everything we need. So we look to you, and we want to rejoice before you today. Oh, Father God, we pray that you will meet every need that's in this house. Some of us need strengthening. Some of us need just a word from you to continue on. Oh, God, we thank you how you... Take care of our families. <clears throat> we th uh, some of them are incarcerated, some in the hospital, out there in the streets wandering around. Don't know darkness from light. Oh, God, we thank you for your great mercy today. And so, Lord, we pray that you will bless this service this morning. Not only here, but, Lord, you are such a great God. You take care of the whole universe. And, Lord, we just thank you for your mercy and your goodness this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Our scripture will come from 1 Thessalonians 4th chapter, 13th verse. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are to sleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I read unto you from the fourth chapter of First Thessalonians 13 through the 18th verse. May it be edifying to the hearers in Jesus' name. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood. That gives me strength, hallelujah. Oh, from day to day, he will never lose his power. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed. Yeah. 
gives me strength from day, from day to day. Oh, today, from day to day. Oh, he will never lose. Oh, his power. Oh, it reaches to the heart. Never lose. 
Lord today. We're grateful for his goodness and for his mercy. Praise the Lord. So one thing we got a warning already. You better be quiet and listen to the preacher. You don't want me to lose my place. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We thank God for his goodness and we thank him for his mercy. Praise the Lord. Mother Hayes is back in the house. Praise the Lord. Amen. We, we miss you, Mother. Praise God. And to others, perhaps I, 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 I might have missed, but I thank God. Amen. Thank God for the saints just being here, being a part. Praise God. Soldiers. Amen. Amen. So I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Praise God. We got some soldiers in the house. Praise the Lord. God has blessed us. God has really blessed us. And praise God. First of all, I want to. Uh, let uh, Miriam and Faye know my, my heart, our hearts go out in the loss of their father, Deacon, praise God, Sidney Wilson. And I'm sorry, so sorry that I, I wasn't there. My, my grandson, he brought me obituary yesterday after it, had, after it was over. And I said, I didn't know Mr. Chief can't pass. Man. I'm so sorry. I mean, you know I would have been there by the help of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We grew up together. Amen. They live on Madison Avenue. Praise the Lord. So we just thank God. And our hearts also are heard about baby Sydney. Amen. Junior the third. Uh Sydney the third. Baby used to be a uh member here. Praise God. He's in the hospital. And we just want to pray. We know that God is able. Amen. God is able. You, you know what the enemy wants to tell you? Say, well, when it rains. It pours. It might be so. Might be so. Some of our attacks are hard, but in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our troubles, praise God. God is able to do great things. God will work, work a miracle. Amen. Anybody believe in the miracle working God? Hallelujah to God. I, I said. I said. Anybody believe in the miracle working God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know one 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 man over there, praise the Lord, the evangelist, praise God. Do you believe in God or a miracle? Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He he has a testimony. God had done some great things, praise the Lord. I went to the hospital and he looked like he had had him and all this stuff and couldn't move and all this metal all around him and things didn't look too good. But 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 but, 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 but God, hallelujah. God will do some things, amen. God will bring you out, amen. We don't understand all the time why we go through the things that we go through in life, but praise God, he's there, amen. We got to believe him through faith, praise God. Trust him through faith, amen. When he say, I'll never leave you, I won't forsake you, that means in the good times and the bad times, praise God. We can have the testimony that David had. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, praise God, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, thy comfort me. Glory to God. He's there for us. Amen. We ought to give him some praise. Hallelujah. We ought to lift up his name. We ought to just tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being there. Thank you for opening the door. Thank you for closing some doors. Amen. You, you didn't let them do it. They wanted to do it. They came against us, praise God. But you held it back. You held it back. You wouldn't let the enemy do what he wanted to do in our lives, praise God. You told him, hold it, stop, wait a minute. Don't go no further, praise God. You got to put the brakes on. That's my child. That's my daughter. That's my son. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's why I praise him, y'all. Yes, Lord. He's shown himself to be mighty in the lives of his people. All right. All right. Praise God. All right. All right. Pull my coattail. <laughs> Jumping the gun. They say don't put the cart before the horse, but this horse ready to go. I got some things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the goodness of God. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And we praise him. We thank him.
Praise God. We worship him. Praise God. We adore him because he is good and he is God. All right. All right. Amen. With the same excitement, I want you to take an offering in your hand. It's offering time. Hallelujah. This is a time that God has given us that we can give, that we can share in this work, sharing the ministry. Praise God. We've been reading. We've been reading. Praise God. As an organ, as a church about the fundraiser and what our plans are, our goals are. Amen. In this uh, in this time. And so, praise God, please. It, just just make that sacrifice and do it to God. Do it unto God. Praise God. So, amen. If you can, that two, that three, or that five thousand dollar fundraiser sacrifice, please do it. Amen. We broke it into pieces. Amen. I got my little piece today. Amen. You got your piece? <laughs> I got my piece today. Amen. Charlotte, you, we got our piece. Amen. Praise, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to be. Amen. A blessing to this work of God. So take his tithe, your offering, and your gifts, and stand with me. Praise God. Do your part. This is ours. Nobody should take care of your stuff better than you. Amen. So with your with your offering, let's look to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I, I can't look to other bosses to wash my car not all the time. Sooner or later, they say, brother, that's your car. You got to take care of it. Amen. And this is our church. God has given us this church. He's put us here. So let us take care of it. With your offering, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do thank you. We praise you for the offering that you've given us to give to you. We ask you, Jesus, to consecrate this offering, dedicate it. Amen. Sanctify it. Set it apart for your work, for your service. Bless your people. Lord, bless us that we can do more. Praise God. Teach us how. Show us how. Amen. To live in a way that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing that we won't have room to receive. Lord, if we are not there, teach us how. Teach us how to give. Amen. From our hearts. Get, teach us how. Praise God. God to give, not grudgingly, even not even of necessity, that we can be a cheerful giver, that we can say, I was glad when I said, hallelujah, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, if you just bless us with that same concept, that same mindset, that we can say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us offer an offering of to the Lord. Praise God. We thank you and we praise you for it. We give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we pray this prayer to the glory of God our Father. Amen. You may be seated. The deacons will serve us and the choir will bless us. Amen. Tell thee, see these jewels rich and rare. Was thou not thy lovely bride to be in that country over there? It shall be light in the evening time. The way to glory you will surely find through the waterway. There is a light today, baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, young and old, repent of all your sins, and the Holy Ghost will enter in. The evening time has come. It's a fact that God and Christ are one. It shall be light in the evening time. The way to glory you will surely find. Through the waterway, there is a light today. Baptized in Jesus' name. Young and old, repent of all your sins. Oh, and the Holy Ghost will enter in. 
Such a sweet spirit in here this morning. I'm so glad I'm here. Thank the Lord. Uh, pa assistant pastor is going to come before us now with the word of God. But before he does, we're going to have a, a solo. And the next voice you hear will be that of our assistant pastor, District Elder Jeff Davis. Let us greet him with a hearty amen. Amen. This glory. Yes, yes. Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for my heavenly home when Jesus is? My portion, a constant friend is he. His earth is on the sparrow. And I know he watches, he watches over me. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for my heavenly home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His earth is of the little sparrow. And I know he watches, he watches me. I see because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, his eye is on the little sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing, I sing because mm, I'm so happy. Yeah. I sing. I sing because he set me free. His eyes, his eyes, God's eyes, his eyes is all the little sparrow. And I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know if his eyes is on the sparrow, I know he watches, he watches over me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. His eyes is on the sparrow. 
Thank you, Jesus. I know he watches me. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You are ready. You are ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Praise God. I'm ready. Praise God. Amen. I would like for you to notice me. We're going to go by. Praise God. Y'all remember what scripture you used the last two times at least that I spoke to you? Anybody remember? Romans. <laughs> Don't look at your note. <laughs> <laughs> Romans the first chapter yeah. verses 16 through 17 it, it's so much in, in the word of God we find it to be so deep and so wide so full praise God it's, it's, it's just you can't exhaust the word of God and when we look at this word of God this Romans that first chapter Praise God. We spoke about Romans, that Paul's theme in Romans was the gospel of God. And then the 16th verse, he said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And it's so important for the Christian, for the saints, for those who are justified in Christ, that we live by our faith. Faith is essential, praise God. Faith is the key. It is through faith, praise God, we believe God. It's through faith that we believe that God created the universe, this world, this earth. Praise God by speaking, by saying, let there be. We wasn't there. We couldn't see it, praise God. But we believe it through faith in God and faith in this world. And so here Paul spoke about I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And last week, last four, third Sunday, we spoke and emphasized, we did a general thought of salvation. And for those, for the sake of those who wasn't able to come, amen on. The third Sunday, I want to give this some this definition of salvation in a summary, praise God, that Schofield has in his Bible. The word salvation, that is God of Christ or as a savior, it includes divine words for salvation as are heal, healing, recovery. Save, saving, whole, holy, or wholesome. When we look at salvation, praise God, it's a Hebrew and a Greek word. For, it implies the idea of deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, soundness. Salvation is a great inclusive word of the gospel gathering to itself all the redemptive acts and purposes of God such as justification, redemption, grace, propitiation, imputation, forgiveness, sanctification, glorification. And the reason that salvation is in three tenths, and it's important that we understand this. First of all, the believer has been saved from the guilt and the penalty of sin. Praise God. The believer, secondly, the believer is being saved from the habit and dominion of sin. And thirdly, the believer is to be saved in the sense of entire conformity to Christ. We grow in Christ. We love him. We learn as we take his yoke and learn of him. We grow in Christ. We grow in the knowledge of him. And the more, of course, the more we know of him, the more we love him, the more we want to serve him. Praise God. And salvation 
It is by grace and it's through faith. Salvation is a free gift. It's holy without rape. I mean, holy without work. Praise God. So the divine order is first salvation. Then works comes after salvation. Praise God. So today what we want to do is to just pull out this one word and kind of focus on this one word being, since this is our Holy Communion Sunday, we want to look at that word propitiation. Praise God. Propitiation. Praise God. And that's propitiation. We go, let us go. Paul went on to, amen, clarifying to, to explain somewhat this in Romans, that third chapter. Let us go there, that third chapter, verses 21 through 24. Amen. Praise God. Propitiation. And my thought today is the ultimate sacrifice. Propitiation. Amen. My, my tongue gonna get it, y'all. The ultimate sacrifice. Praise God. In this third chapter of Romans, verses 21 through 25, it says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe. But there's no difference. Praise God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by the grace through the redemptive, re, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness from the remissions of sin that are passed, hallelujah, through the forbearance of God. That's saying a lot, y'all. You know, praise God. Amen. What that forbearance of God is this. Praise God. Sin that the Old Testament prophet and Old Testament people had committed, they wasn't really forgiven. It was set aside. God overlooked it. His forbearance was this, that he knew that he had a Savior, that he was going to sin Amen. To cover the sins of this world. In that first, in, uh, well, Genesis, the third chapter, I believe the 15th verse, how that God promised that he would send empathy between, amen, the seed and the woman. And how that uh, he was going to send a deliverer, someone to uh, appease God for the things that uh, Adam had done. And it was because of Adam, since Adam, all have sinned, praise God. But it's through the Lord Jesus Christ that all has been made right, praise God. So God made it possible, amen. That 25th verse said, for whom God has set forth as a propitiation through faith, praise God, in his blood. The Old Testament teaches us even from the beginning, even with Cain and Abel, that it was necessary for a blood sacrifice. The Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So what the Lord did, what God did, praise God, he took, amen, the blood of rams, bullets, and goats as just a, a temporary remedy, praise God, that he can look over the sins of the people. They had to offer up, the high priest would have to offer, offer up uh, sacrifices for his sins and also for the sins of others, praise God. But when Jesus came, praise God, hallelujah to God, he put an a end to the law. And it's amazing that some people, some organizations, some religions try to still uphold the law. But thank God through the Lord Jesus Christ, the law wasn't put a, done away with, amen, but the law was fulfilled. When Jesus said, a body has not prepared, hallelujah, it was a body that was needed, that our sins would be forgiven. 
Praise God. So when we look at that word propitiation, this is a put propitiatory sacrifices. Praise God. And this sacrifice is through faith. Amen. In the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This sacrifice that God, amen, sent his son to make for you and I, amen, it's the ultimate sacrifice. And when we look at that ultimate, that word ultimate, praise God, it is, is happening. It's the end of the process, the final sacrifice. We don't have to do that anymore. Praise God. The sacrifices that we make to God are different now. The sacrifices has nothing to do with blood. Praise God. Because the sins have already been forgiven. And when we understand the forgiveness of sin, praise God, we understand that that thing is gone. It's gone forever. Praise God. It's gone. His sacrifice was, amen, for our past sins, the things that we was born, the things that we did before, amen, we were saved. When we went under the blood, hallelujah to God, when we was baptized in his name, when we was buried with him, we came up with a newness of life and the old things, everything, praise God, that was a part of us before, praise God, it was just buried. It was buried, it was dead and buried, and it can't be dug, dug up anymore. It's already gone, praise God. And that sacrifice didn't only, amen, cover our past sins, praise God, hey, but it covered our sins today. Day. Hallelujah. When we slip, we have an advocate. Amen. That we, we have an advocate with God that we can, hallelujah, find forgiveness. And not only that, hey, when that sacrifice that was made, it was made, amen, in the effect that in the future, praise God, we can say we are saved. Hallelujah. And you know, the world going to want you to say, well, nobody saved yet. That's a lie. We're saved, praise God, through faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm just as saved as I'm going to be. Hallelujah. Praise God. When I get 85, I'm just as saved as I was when I first, praise God, received the Lord. When he first gave me the Holy Ghost, I am saved. Not just me, but all of us who are saved. Amen. Who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who accept, amen, that bloody sacrifice that he made for you and I. Amen. So when we look at that word, amen, the ultimate sacrifice, it's the last, it's the final, it's the concluding sacrifice. It was terminal. Hallelujah. It's ended all. It was the ultimate, the endmost. Amen. The farthest that uh, a sacrifice could go, God did it for us. Praise God. When we look at that word, uh, pitiation in first john that second chapter verses one and two uh john amen saint john he wrote he says for my little children these things write on to you that ye sin not praise god this is what i'm saying to you hallelujah when you when you're covered in the blood he said i don't want you to sin i'm writing to you i'm writing these things to you um, that you sin not praise god Amen. Praise God. Again, they say, my little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. Amen. And if any man do sin, hallelujah, if that you happen to slip, he says what? We have an advocate. We have something that come in our stead. We have a lawyer. We have someone that speaks for us. Hallelujah to God. We have someone. We say we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, amen. And he is the propitiation. Uh, uh, he is the sacrifice, amen, for our sins. And not only, uh, not, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen, it was so true. When John wrote in, in John 3, 16, the same man wrote, amen, in the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, I come not to condemn the world, amen, but I let the world through him, hallelujah to God, might have life. Amen. He gave himself. He gave himself. 
Amen. Say, God sent not his son, amen, to condemn the world. That wasn't his purpose. His purpose was to save the world. Amen. His purpose that man can gain what Adam lost. Praise God, what Adam lost through disobedience. Praise God, Christ Jesus, our Savior. He gained that bite through the obedience. Praise God. The Bible says he became obedient unto death, even that death of the cross. He said, wherefore God have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ he's Lord. He is Lord. Everybody's going to know one day that he is Lord. He is Lord. He became sin for us. Hallelujah to God. Who knew no sin, he became sin. They say, well, how did the Lord become sin? God had a way around that also. Amen. Because he was spotless, praise God. He was blameless. There was no God in him. But the scriptures say, curse is the man that hang on the cross. So he took himself and he became a curse hanging on that cross that you and I can live. Hallelujah. He died that we can live. He became this for us. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to your name, oh God. I praise you. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Then John said again in this first John, that fourth chapter, verses 10 and 11. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Uh, and I think he was feeding off of what he said. Amen. In that first in John 3 16, when he did say. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. He, he loved us so much. Amen. Then he, what uh, John said in his fourth chapter, first John, that 10th verse and 11th verse, he said, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin. He sent his son to make the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Amen. And it said, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. Amen. If God loved us that much, amen, we can put aside those things and people, amen, uh, offend you when people don't treat you right. Amen. Because we know when you love, love is of God. God is love. And there's an a, a attribute of love. Amen. The love covers a multitude of sin. Amen. They, we, God knew that we wasn't right. Amen. God knew that we didn't deserve it. Amen. But he covered those things with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And what we ought to do is cover our, up our brothers and our sisters' sins with love, praise God. Because I love you, I'm not going to hold out against you. Amen. If God loved me that much, I can also love you. Hallelujah. With a godly love. And God's love is not an emotional love. God's love is not even a friendship. God's love is understanding God's redemptive act to an undeserving person. You don't deserve me to love you that day. What you did was terrible. What you did was awful. But I'm going to look at God, how God did it. I want to do it like God did it. I'm going to love you. Amen. I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to put it aside. When we look at forgiveness, we say, well, we can't forgive him, but I'm not going to forget Amen. But to forgive, forgive my best definition that suits me, that works in my life is this. Hallelujah. When I forgive a person, amen, it's that I'm not going to hold that to your charge anymore. Amen. It happened, praise God, but I'm not going to charge you with it. Amen. When it's covered. Amen. Amen. When years go by. Amen. I'm not going to bring that thing back. You remember what you did. You did that last year. The same old thing. You did it again. Amen. You just keep doing it. And then not only that, amen, but you offend me in another way. Last time, praise God. But when you don't hold it to that charge, amen, when you let that thing go, amen, when you let it go, let it go. Sometimes we just got to let it go. Hallelujah. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And then in the Amplified version of that, Romans, go back to that Romans, that 
third chapter, the Amplified Version, that 25th verse, amen, it tells us whom God put forth before the eyes of all, amen, as a mercy seat, hallelujah, and as a propitiation, amen, by his blood, amen, the cleansing and the life-giving sacrifice of atonement and a reconciliation, amen, to be received through faith, hallelujah. It's through faith we receive, amen, that atonement, that forgiveness of sin. Sometimes God forgive you and you can't forgive yourself because you don't understand God's forgiveness. Amen, that thing don't belong to me anymore. That's not mine, that's not me, amen, that not me. Hallelujah, all things are washed away. People want to hold you to your past. Amen, what you did 20 years ago. They want to hold it against you. But when God forgive you. Oh, hallelujah. I said, when God forgive you, who are we? To hold it against a person. Amen, the Bible say, who are thou that judges another man's servant? They don't belong to you. They belong to God. God said, all souls are mine. Hallelujah. We're not our own. We've been bought with the price. And he then he went to tell us again, who are thou that judges another man's servant to his master? He stands or fall. Then he say, God is able to make them stand because what God does, no man can do. We'll hold it against him. I, I, I was talking to a young man. Amen. And, and look like Praise God, he's, he's, he's facing death, and this is why I was talking to him. He's in a pretty bad shape, praise God. But he had, I know, amen, through conversations, he harbor, amen, unforgiveness and bitterness in his heart. And it's a fight that it, it is true. Some of these things did happen, praise God. Amen, he was offended. It was wrong. Just as wrong, just as wrong as could be. Praise God, but you're facing death. Amen, you and your Bad. Amen. You look like you'll never get up again. Amen. And someone, the preacher, come and tell you, uh, Hallelujah, you got to lay that down aside. You got to, Amen, put that thing under the blood. You got to let it go. Amen. You got to put that thing aside. Amen. You got to prepare yourself to, to meet God. God said, If you don't forgive your brother, how can you expect God to forgive you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we talked and we talked. And he said, uh, there's this bowl. Hallelujah. Can't turn over. Somebody got to help him turn over. But just as bowl, he said, I, 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 I might forgive him, but it won't be today. Amen. How can one be so deceived? Let it go. Let it go. Gotta let it go. Let it go. Oh my God. Did I finish? Uh, 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 let me start over with that. Romans. <laughs> Who wasn't paying attention? <laughs> that third chapter of Romans, that Amplified Virgin, it said, Whom God put forward. Before the eyes of all, as a mercy seat and a propitiation by his blood, the cleansing and the life giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to be seed, to be rather received through faith. This was to show God's righteousness because he is in his divine forbearance and that again that word forbearance is God amen ignoring what should have been for the wages of sin is death but God ignored it for generations praise God his divine amen forbearance he had passed over and Ignore the former sins without punishment. He didn't punish them for 
what he did. He ignored it. Amen. Because he knew he was going to have a savior. He knew that something was going to happen. And when we come together today in this communion, amen, it's a, I believe in my heart, it's such an important part of our worship. The Lord didn't ask us to do very many things. Uh, praise God as far as ordinances, amen. All he asked us to do is to, as an ordinance, is to go down in his name, to be associated with him. Amen. To take on him. How do we take on his death that we can live? It wasn't for his benefit, but it was a, for our benefit. Amen. By through faith, we believe through baptism. Amen. That I died with him and I rose in the newness of life. It didn't benefit him one iota. Amen. But it helped us to build our faith. Amen. He told us if you got die with me, then you'll rise with me in the newness of life. And so it was totally to our benefit. But then the ultimate sacrifice, when we look at, amen, the gruesome, gruesome, I can't, amen, find the words in my small vocabulary to, amen, to express or to explain the type of death that our Savior died. It was gruesome. It was horrible. Amen. It was it was malign. It was it was just a terrible, a terrible death. It's a death that one wouldn't wish on their enemies. Hallelujah. It was unsanitized. Amen. Amen. It was a death, praise God, that our laws have forbidden. I believe it was worse then those few seconds in the electric chair. Amen. I believe it. Amen. It was worse than standing before a firing squad. Yeah, I believe it was worse. Amen. Than hanging on the loose. Amen. And, and dropping from the gallows. I believe it was worse. Amen. Because it was just, it, it just made it go on and on and on. Amen. We said curse. See, decided to become a curse. Amen. So he chose that cross. Amen. He let him hang him there on the cross. He didn't, res he didn't resist it. Amen. He didn't fight against it. Amen. He hung there. He hung there. But before he hung there, amen, they whooped him. And they whooped him. And they whooped him. And they whooped him. Amen. They had, amen, just not a belt. Not just a whip. But they had these things, amen, these pearls, uh, amen, iron things on that whip, amen, and it cut through his skin, blood, blood, amen, coming out of his skin. Glory to God. Ultimate sacrifice. They whooped him. Hallelujah to God. Then they made him carry his own cross. Amen, I, I believe that was significant. Amen, and I don't, well, I don't know. They sing the song. Amen, that Jesus bore his cross to know, and we must wear ours. But some ways, somehow, that's just not accurate. It's not correct because every cross I bear, Jesus is there with me to help me, to help me carry my cross. Sound good as a song. Hey, but I thank God that he'll never leave you. I thank God he'll never forsake you. I thank God that you're carrying a cross, but you're not carrying it alone. Amen. You might not know it. Amen. But you're not feeling the full weight of the cross that you're carrying. Amen. Because if the enemy had his way, the cross that you carry. Amen. It will kill you. But God won't let him kill you. God won't let him destroy you. God won't let him go so far. God has given not just him himself, but God has given his church power. Amen. The power of the gospel of God. He tells us what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. The thing is we're not binding in all things. Be letting them by. Uh, you got to okay, I see you. Sometimes you got to stand up. And, I say sometimes you got to stand up. 
God made it possible. He made the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. And we take it so lightly. Amen. In, in, in reality. Amen. One of the worst attended uh, Sundays, times in church, is communion Sunday. The devil fooled people. Amen. And say, well, I messed up and I'm not going. Amen. But I thank God. I know how to put it under the blood. Hallelujah. Put it under the blood. Put it under the blood. He said, praise God again. In that second chapter of First John, he said, brother and beloved, I write this that you don't sin. But if you do sin, amen, we have an advocate. We have a lawyer. We have a spokesman. Huh. Yes. Oh, my Thank you, Jesus. The ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate. Can't get no better than this. Can't get no better. Hebrew, that fourth chapter, I'm trying to wind down. Oh, God, I praise you. I, I like this. <laughs> fourth chapter, Hebrews, y'all turn. I, I want you to see this. Amen. Don't take my word for it. But I want you to see it. You got to say amen. The ultimate sacrifice. Amen. The sacrifice that the Lord has made. While some of you may be a little slow, let me read this uh, first John, that second chapter one, verse one and two again. Amen. And then it's, it ties so, so well. It fits so good with that fourth chapter of Hebrews. And that's first John, that second chapter. You just hold Hebrew because I want you to read that. Amen. It says, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. If any man sin." We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation. And again, that propitiation in the generic terms is he is the sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Oh, God, the ultimate sacrifice. That Hebrew, that fourth chapter. Amen. Praise your name, Jesus. That 14th verse through 16. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Say, let us hold fast to our profession. Oh, and that profession is a profession of faith. Hallelujah. But we have not in high priest, which cannot be touched with, our, with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And I love this. I, 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 I do it so many times. Amen. I can't wear it out. Amen. Don't, I just I, sometimes I just have to run. Hallelujah. Run to the cross. Hallelujah. And I boldly praise God. See, 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 first, first you gotta understand something. Before I read the 16th verse, you understand, amen. That child that has been a child, been an heir, been a joint heir with Christ Jesus. There are certain rights and privileges that we have as children of God. Amen. We don't have to do like the world does. Amen. Amen. Sometimes a person lives such a, 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 a sinful life that they, they, they feel like, amen, God won't hear them, that they've done so bad, that, amen, God won't forgive them. And who are they? Amen. To play with God. They, they know their lifestyle. Praise God. But I thank God for 
the plan of salvation that he's set forth and Peter, amen, was the spokesman, amen, when the church began. All these other people and all these other doctrine that came after the church, the true church, began, amen, and I don't want to sound dogmatic, but fights are the fights. They're false. They're not true. That's not how the church started. Amen. Even when Peter was preaching the gospel, amen, they were pricked in their hearts. They said unto the people, to Peter, and to the rest of the disciples, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter stood up, amen, because God gave him the key. God, and the key is a, a symbol of authority. When God gave him the key, God gave him the authority. Amen. God loved John. Amen. Dearly. It was to, he, John was to his heart. But if John had, amen, when the church opened, if John had stood up and said, you sit down, Peter. Amen. You denied the Lord and I was with him. Amen. And I watched over his mother. Amen. And I did this and did that. Praise God, you ought to sit down because you just messed up, Peter. Amen. But I thank God for grace. Amen. When the Lord told Peter, amen. When he told, amen, brother, amen, Mary and Martha, amen, said, go tell my disciples and Peter. <laughs> he didn't count Peter out. Amen. Because he gave Peter a charge. Amen. He gave Peter a key. Amen. He told Peter, Satan desired to have you. And that doesn't just apply to Peter. Amen. James, John, and the other disciples, but it also applied to you and I. Amen. Satan desired to have you and to sift you as wheat. But he said, but I prayed for you. Amen. And when, not if, but when you are converted. Amen. I want you to strengthen the brethren. Amen. So Peter had the key. Amen. John had the love. Amen. John understood the love of God. John understood even better than all the disciples. He saw Christ as God. He saw it. He saw it. But he didn't have the key. He didn't have the authority. Amen. God didn't take it away from Peter. God didn't take it away from him. Praise God. God gave him the authority. And so when they out, when they when they stood up and they asked men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. The person with the key, the person with the authority said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Amen. Not just the Catholic, not the apostolic, not the Pentecostal, not the Baptist, amen, not the Episcopalians, amen, not the Muslim, not just the Jews, praise God, but every one of you, everyone, every one of you, amen, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness, for the remission, for the forgiveness of your sin. When you baptize, your sins are forgiven. Amen. If you're not baptized in his name, if you don't uh, uh, associate, amen, if you don't identify with your sacrifice, I said if you don't identify, amen, with the ultimate sacrifice, your sins haven't been forgiven, not with titles, amen, not with other names, amen, because there's no other name given a man among men. Well, why we must be saved. Peter stood up. Then he said, if you do this, amen, you'll receive the promise. Amen, because the, God promised it. Amen, the promise is unto you. Hallelujah, God promised it. Amen, it's unto your children. Amen, it's unto all or for all. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I say this ultimate sacrifice. Let's get back to that fourth chapter. That 16th verse. Maybe we lost some of it. Let's go back to the 14th verse. Amen. It says, seeing then that we have a great high, high priest that is passing to the heavens, Jesus Christ, Jesus rather, the Son of God. Let's hold fast our profession. But we have not a high priest who which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points tempted, like as we are. Yet without sin. Then they give us this assurance that 16th verse. Say, let us therefore 
come boldly. <laughs> I'm so glad I can go to Christ. I don't, I'm so glad I don't have to ease in there. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I'm so glad I can just fall on my knees anywhere. Don't have to go through a formality. Amen. Don't have to make that get to church. Amen. I can make it wherever I am. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say that us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And I want to close with this as we prepare for our communion. Just with the scripture. I'm done. Praise God. It says that ninth chapter of Hebrew and Hebrews is a, a, a book. Amen. That it's important for us to read it as we it helps us to understand that sacrifice says help us to understand that Jesus was not only the sacrificial lamb, but he was also the high priest. Hallelujah. So when he sacrificed himself. He went before God as a high priest. Hallelujah. And I stay here. Hallelujah. He's there for us. He is our advocate. He's the righteous one. That ninth chapter of Hebrews, verses 11 through 15, it says, But Christ being come as a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered to one, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifers sprinkled sprinkling the unclean sacrifice. To purify the to purify the flesh, how much more shall the blood of, blood of Christ through the eternal Spirit Spirit offered Himself without spots to God purge your conscience from the dead words to serve the living God, and for this cause He is a mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemptions praise God of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance oh God I praise you the ultimate sacrifice amen God gave his son his son gave his life, and his life set us free. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 The ultimate sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Choir will bless us.
Would you please stand with us? Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we so much give thanks unto you this morning. We felt your presence and we feel your love. And Lord, we want to honor that today. Oh, Lord, while we eat of this flesh, your flesh, and drink your blood to have life in us. Father, I pray that you will give a renewing Oh, God, let us draw nigher and closer to you than we were before. Let us pay attention to what you've given out to us. A closer walk, walking on a higher level, understanding. Oh, God, in receiving our suffering, remembering that we're not carrying a cross by ourselves. You're right there with us. And if we were to learn anything, we'll learn what you went through when you was in the flesh. Oh God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yes. we pray that no one here will drink this blood or eat this flesh to damnation to their souls. In this, Lord, is healing, and that's what we look for. Oh God, we just want everything that you promised us. We're still holding back to it. Oh God, let us have true fellowship one with another. Oh God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray this blessing and we ask you in Jesus' name and we also give you thanks in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Renee, stand up. On the same night that the Lord was betrayed, Thank you, Jesus. he took bread after he blessed it. He said to his disciples, take heed. Jesus. This is my body, which was broken be you this doing remembers of me not asking y'all this other stuff I want you to 
take my body. I want you to eat in remembrance of me. Yes, Lord, thank you. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And after the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. <laughs> Thank you, y'all. Until he comes. How can it be? He's dying for me. Oh, yes. He was dying for me. He was dying for me.